Hello everyone. So in this video, we're going to talk about isotopes. So when we talk about isotopes, what we're talking about is atoms of the same element. So in other words, they have the same number of protons in their nuclei, yet they have unequal masses. And the reason why their masses are different is because they differ in the number of neutrons that they have in their nuclei. So the way that we keep tabs uh, on different isotopes is we use a term called the mass number, uh, which is denoted by a capital A. And the mass number is simply the number of protons plus the number of neutrons that that particular isotope has. So uh, a commonly used notation looks sort of like this, where this uppercase X here in the center, that's the chemical symbol of the element. Of course, the chemical symbol is unique to that element. No two elements have the same chemical symbol. Uh, the uppercase Z uh, subscript in front of the X, that is the atomic number that that element has. Again, it's the number of protons in the nucleus of that element, and it is also unique to the element. And then the uppercase A, that is the mass number, as we just mentioned previously. So all you have to do to get the number of neutrons that a particular isotope has is take A, the mass number, and subtract away the atomic number Z. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the naturally occurring isotopes of carbon. So there are three of them. Uh, there's carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. Notice that in all three cases, the atomic number, Z, the subscript in front of the, uh, in front of the chemical symbol, is 6. This will always be true for carbon. If this was any number other than 6, then the symbol wouldn't be C. It would be a symbol for some other element. So you can probably figure out now that the putting the atomic number there is kind of redundant. We know the atomic number is six. It can't be anything else. So the atomic number is often omitted from the isotope notation. So this is one notation that you can use, but there's also a couple of different uh, ways that you can represent this as well. Another way to represent the isotopes is to have the uh, name of the element followed by the mass number separated by a hyphen, so carbon-12, carbon-13, carbon-14. And yet another way to represent this is to uh, have the chemical symbol and the mass number separated by a hyphen, so C12, C13, C14. These are just three different ways of saying the exact same thing. So with that in mind, uh, let's fill in the blanks uh, on this table here. So uh, let's go through this first one. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to we're going to uh, fill in how many protons, neutrons, and electrons that each one of these isotopes uh, has. So sodium-18, how many protons does sodium-18 have? Well, if you consult your handy-dandy periodic table, it's going to tell you that sodium has an atomic number of 11. So it, that means it has 11 protons in its nucleus. To get the number of neutrons, remember we take that mass number, 18, subtract away 11, and that gives us 7 neutrons. And then how many electrons does this have? Well, in all of these cases, the number of electrons is going to be the same as the number of protons. We're talking about atoms here. We're not talking about anything that is positively and negatively charged. Uh, in, in a few more videos, I'm going to talk about ions, which do have a charge. And, uh, but, but these are all atoms, so the number of electrons is going to be the same as protons, which for sodium-18, it's going to be 11. So let's move on to the next one. This is cesium-133. How many protons does cesium-133 have? Again, the periodic table is going to tell us that the atomic number is 55, so there are 55 protons. To get the mass number, excuse me, to get the number of neutrons, we take that mass number, that 133, subtract away 55, and that's going to be 78 neutrons. And then the number of electrons, easy, that's going to be 55. So let's do one more before we move on. This is boron-10. Number of protons, again, periodic table, tells us that the atomic number is 5. Number of neutrons, take that mass number, that 10, subtract 5, the number of protons, and you get 5 neutrons. And then the number of electrons is, you guessed it, 5. So this is 555 for boron-10. So again, this notation, it's it's pretty straightforward. You shouldn't really uh, have a big problem with that. So now I'd like to switch gears a little bit and talk about a, a little term called atomic mass. And this should not be confused from mass number because it's different from mass number. The atomic mass is basically just one mass that represents all of the naturally occurring isotopes of a given element. 
So we say that the atomic mass is weighted according to the natural abundance of each isotope. So what that means is, uh, suppose I have two isotopes of a given element. If one of those isotopes is much more abundant than the other one, then the atomic mass is going to be much closer to that more abundant isotope than the other one. So uh, this, in this example, I've chosen gallium. Gallium has an atomic mass of 69.723. So the atomic mass is that long-winded number that appears just below the chemical symbol, usually. And this number is actually, like I said, it's weighted according to the natural abundance of all of the naturally occurring isotopes of gallium. So let's, uh, let's see if we can't figure out the uh, atomic mass of gallium without just being given it. So again, gallium, well, gallium actually has two naturally occurring isotopes. And one of them is gallium-69, which has a mass of 68.926 AMU, atomic mass units. And it is it constitutes 60.11% uh, of naturally occurring gallium. And then the other isotope is gallium-71, which has a mass of 70.925 AMU and a natural abundance of 39.89%. So two things should be readily apparent here. Uh, one of them is that, is that gallium-71 is heavier than gallium-69, so that's should be because it has two more neutrons so that that checks out and then another thing is that the uh the uh if you add the percent abundances together you get a hundred percent so if you want you can go ahead and add these together and see if you get a hundred and indeed you will so the question is given the masses and the relative abundances of these isotopes how do we find the atomic mass of gallium well the way this is done is according to the following formula so what we do is we take a summation. So this, uh, this letter here, this is a Greek letter. This is a capital sigma. And don't be afraid by this notation. It's just all it means is you're taking a summation over n isotopes. So n is the number of isotopes we have. So if there's only one naturally occurring isotope, n equals 1. If there are two naturally occurring isotopes, n equals 2. And so, so on and so forth. So what we're doing is we're taking a summation of terms. And each of our terms is going to be the fraction of isotope n. And when I say fraction, I'm just talking about the percent abundance expressed as a fraction. And the way that you do that is by uh, dividing by that, uh, that percent by 100. So uh, in other words, uh, for, for example, 60.11% represented as a fraction would be 0.6011. So that's what, I talk, that, that's what I'm saying when I talk about uh, the fraction of the isotope. So you take the fraction of that isotope and you multiply it by the mass of that uh, of that isotope. So what we're going to do for gallium uh, for gallium is we're going to have two terms here. So again, to get the atomic mass of gallium, we have a term for gallium 69 and we have a term for gallium 71. It's a summation. That's what this sigma means. So we're going to add those two terms together. And our first term, our gallium 69 term, is going to again be the fraction of gallium 69. 0.6011. Again, nothing crazy. All I did was just take that percent and divide it by 100 or just move the decimal point two places to the left or however you want to, uh, however you want to think of it. And then we're going to take that and multiply it by its mass, which is that 68.926 AMU. And then we're going to add to that the same thing for gallium 71. The fraction of gallium 71, that's 0.3989. And the atomic mass is 70 point, excuse me, the mass of gallium 71 is 70.925 AMU. So this is it. This is all we have to do. And uh, I will uh, pause briefly. I'll allow you to pause the video and calculate this for yourself. Okay, so hopefully you, you paused the video and you worked it out yourself. And the number I got is 69.723 AMU. And uh, if you, if you uh, scroll back a little bit, if you rewind the video back, that's actually the number that appeared before uh, the chemical symbol of gallium. So it does kind of you know, make sense what we're doing here. It, it agrees with what we see on the periodic table. Uh, so I'm going to stop this video here. Um, I definitely have a little bit more that I'd like to uh, go over with isotopes, uh, especially uh, in the next video. I'm probably going to uh, probably going going to uh, we're going to find the um, I can't think today. <laughs>
<laughs> we're going to find the relative amounts of two different isotopes given their uh, isotopic masses and their atomic mass. So um, I'll look forward to doing that. And uh, all right, hope you guys learned something. Have a good one.